Okay, let's go. Oh. Ah. Man, it's too close to Christmas. I shouldn't be doing this. Enjoy today's video. Hello again. It is almost Christmas and you guys are in luck. Today we will learn how to make a simple aimbot for Counter-Strike 2. At the end of this video, you will have a program that when you check the aimbot checkbox and hold your desired hotkey, it will automatically aim on the closest enemy. All you need to do is shoot. We also have a second feature which is to aim on teammates if that's your thing. This video is the fourth installment of the CS2 videos playlist and I suggest if you want to try some easier tutorials made for beginners, you can watch those, then come back stronger and face the aimbot. I was thinking of releasing a big video for the holidays, so make sure to write down in the comments your favorite unseen feature now. Also subscribe and like the video so you don't miss it when the video drops whilst showing your affection towards me. But remember, always respect the rules of the game you create trainers on and verify the terms of service. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are conducted with multiplayer disabled to ensure that no other person's experience is harmed. Welcome to today's showcase. We can start by taking a look at the source code or the end result. The project you will have at the end, more or less. So this is it. It's a bit larger than we usually do, but I think it will be worth it in the long run. So we loop through the entities and aim at the enemy closest to us. So let's take a look at it in game, but like always before running any sort of memory operations, a hack or something, we will go to the properties of Counter Strike 2 and set in the launch options Dash Insecure. It's incredibly important that you do this because Dash Insecure disables VAC and we can play in a protected environment and not harm anyone else's experience while playing the game. We can't join normal matchmaking and so on. So let's start the game now. Okay, so when we're in game, in a practice game, we have added some bots, we can test our project. So I press the run button. And we should have a list of the enemies at first. So the opposite team, their health points and their distance. So if, we, if it's not showing this, the offsets are probably outdated and so on. But uh, on with the showcase, we're finally at the enemies. So if we hold the hotkey now, it will aim on the closest enemy. So we can just hold our hotkey and it will aim on the enemies. Pretty cool. It uses the distance closest enemy, Euclidean distance. So that's it. It doesn't use any head bones, it uses the view offset, but still pretty cool. Let's test it on teammates as well. So if we check the aim on teammates checkbox, it will also aim on teammates. If we hold our aim key now, it will aim on our teammates. So remember don't <laughs> use it if you're not supposed to aim on the teammate. But. All right, enjoy this tutorial now. So we begin this tutorial by directly creating a console project in c .net version 8. Once it's created, we will go into the properties of the project and set the build architecture to x64. And when the project is set to the correct build architecture, we will install first the sweat64 memory library. Then we will install the clickable overlay. 
I will set the version to 9.1 because I had some issues with 9.2. The window wasn't correctly set to the screen. If you want to be on the safe side, then also use version 9.1. Time for some actual code. So we will write using switch64, using system.numerics, using system.runtime.interrupt services. Then we will initialize the sweat library by creating a new instance of the sweat class with the process CS2. Then we will get the base address of the client module with sweat.getModuleBase. And after that, we will create a new class that is called renderer. This class, like the name suggests, will handle the rendering. So we will add using clickable transparent overlay and then we will inherit the overlay attribute on our class renderer but for that to happen we will have to implement the protected override void render now that we have laid the blueprint for the renderer let's create an instance of it and call the start and wait for it function Actually, let's comment out the sweat stuff so we can test the rendering. We will add imgui, also using imgui net, but then imgui dot begin and then the windows name. I'll just set it to menu. You should see the little window now at this point and uh, let's continue. We will also make our lives a bit easier by creating a class called entity. This will hold the information on our side, so we will populate this with actual data. For this entity, it will be quite simple. We will just add the attributes that we want. I want to have the pawn address, the controller address, the origin, the view, and some other attributes, so the health, the life stage, and so on. You can add the ones you want, if you want more or less, it's up to you, but these are the ones generally used when making a name bot, I suppose. I don't know. When we have the entity class, we can create a new list of these entities and also a local player. That's our player's information. And again, we will create another class soon. It will be no more classes, but we will create this offsets class where we hold, you guessed it, the offsets. So this class will be static, but we will add it later so you don't have to worry about that. We will get the offsets from A2X CS2 Dumper. So credits for him for creating this GitHub project. So the first offsets will be under the offsets.cs. So this file contains more or less the offsets that often change. So the first offset will be the DV view angles, which are the pitch and yaw and so on, the two floats that will change our view angles. Then we have the local player pawn, and that's just like before, it's the pawn of the local player. Then the DV entity list. So the entity list of the controllers, the pawns, and everything else. The next offsets will be under the client.dll.cs. These do not change as often as the offsets.cs offsets. So the first offset will be the H player pawn, which is the handle to the pawn of an, a controller. Then it's the I health, which is the health points, the old origin which is the position origin of the characters. Then we have the team num, with, which is a number of what team we're on. So we might have the value one and the opposite team might have the value two. The vec view offset, that is an offset from the origin that tells us where our view is. Then we have the life state, which tells us if the character is dead or not. Finally, that we're done with classes for now. We will create a constant that will hold the value of our hotkey. You can find these values on the Microsoft 
documentation of the virtual key codes. Then we will finally create the loop that will perform this aimbot. So we will have our while true, which always runs, and then we will clear our entities list so there is no old objects in there. After that, we will create an int pointer called the entity list. So we will read our client module and the offset dv entity list. This will return the entity list address. Now that we have the entity list address, we can make an list entry. So we will read a pointer which has the entity list address and then the offset 0x10 or in decimal 6, 16 I think. Before we do anything with our list entry, like reading the entities and such, we will have to update the local player's information. This is important because we will make comparisons. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the team attribute in the entity class. So do that. To check that the entities we want uh, are separated correctly and so on. So we update the local player's information, the team, the origin, the health uh, or whatever you could need. And of course we will need some attributes like the position to calculate the angles, the distance, and so on. Now that we have updated our local player, we will finally loop through the entity list. So we will loop through 64 controllers, we check if our entry is valid, then we get the current controller for the iteration by using the sweat.read pointer with the list entry as the address and the i multiplied by 0x78, that's each, the each step. And we check if the controller is valid by comparing it to an int pointer again, dot zero. And because the attributes we seek are not all in the controller, we will have to get the current pawn as well. So we get the pawn handle from the current controller by using the sweat.readInt with the current controller and the H player pawn offset. Now with the pawn handle, we will make a second entry into the entity list and use a bit mask to sort of restrict what values can be entered. Then we get the current pawn with our second entry and the offset 0x78 multiplied by the pawn handle and the bit mask 1ff. And if you don't understand these things and why we do it, please watch my entity list video on CS2 should help you understand things better. Now that we have the current pawn, we can read some attributes. So like the health, the team and life state, we will compare before creating the entity. So we we'll read those. Now that we have the attributes, we will first check the life state. If it's not 256, it means the entity is not alive or whatever. Then we will check the team if it's equal to the local player and also if our menu boolean has it enabled. Because if it's not enabled, we don't want to aim on any teammates. I forgot to add the booleans, so let's go over to our renderer class and add a boolean for the aimbot and then a boolean for the aimon teammate. This will become checkboxes later, don't you worry about it. And now since the aimon team boolean is available, we will just check it with our and and operator if it's disabled. Now that we have checked that the entity is alive and is on our team or not, according to the renderer's aimon team boolean, we will create a new entity object. This entity object will just have all of the attributes we mentioned before 
and some new ones like the origin, the view, the distance and so on. And at last we add the entity to the entities list. After that we will draw it to the console or draw some entities to the console. We will set the console foreground color to the color green and set the color to red if uh, the entity is on the opposite team. After that we just write a text that says the entity's health and the distance. So I just divided the units by a hundred. I don't know if it's really meters. Who knows? But it's you get the feeling how close they are. They are. Before we continue in our main code, we will create a, another class. This will hold or handle the calculations. So the only function within this class will be calculate angles. It will return as a vector two and take two vector threes as parameters. Okay, so to calculate the yaw first, we will have to get the delta x and delta y. Those are the axes that we will use and use a tan two because we will use the tan calculation. We will use the delta y and delta x at the at opposite and adjacent and multiply it by 180 divided by math.pi. Then for the pitch, we will have to take the delta z, then the distance, which is just the Pythagorean theorem, then set the pitch to negative math.aden to get the angle using delta z. The the distance and multiply it by 180 divided by math.pi to convert it to degrees and we're done. At last we return the view angles. Let's go back to our main code and sort the entities by the distance. So we'll, we will just use the order by and the distance attribute. Now we will create an if statement to check that there's an entity to aim on and that our hotkey is placed. We haven't imported hotkeys yet, so let's just import get async key state at the bottom of the code. Now we can use get async key state in the if statement and our hotkey constant and check if it's below zero. That means it's pressed. We will also check with the renderer dot aimbot. That's the checkbox. If all of those are true, we will calculate the view position of our player and the entity we want to aim on. So we will add the origin and the view vector for both the player and the entity. Then we will get the angles with the calculate angles function. After that, we will create a new angles vector because the y axis is before the x axis in our case and we will just set the last value to zero. At last, we will write over the values of the current angles to force our player to aim on the entity. All right, so yeah, quickly, before we try and run this, let's go to the renderer and add the actual checkboxes. So here is the window then we use in GUI dot checkbox let's call it just aimbot refer to our aimbot boolean up here and then after that the last one will be aim on teammates as well and we refer to a team. So that's it. Let's try it out. Okay, before we run our code, make sure that you have launched Counter Strike 2 in properties with the launch option dash insecure. It's incredibly important that you follow this command because otherwise back will 
validates your files and you could be banned. Dash Insecure allows us to play in a protected environment and not harm anyone else. But once you have done that, gone into a bot game, let's run our code. Here we can see some enemies and if we check on that aim on teammates as well, we can see that if we hold our hotkey, he aims on the teammate. Okay, let's see some opposite teammate or opposite that the enemies are there. If I shoot one, we can see that the helps are okay. If I hold the aim key, it aims on the enemies. Would you look at that? 